Well, Siri is quite a character, isn't she? She's perfect for this topic of go big, because it doesn't really get too much bigger than Siri, right? Well, Siri's also a bit mysterious. So as the original voice of Siri, I'm here today to take you on a little trip behind the scenes. Siri is a very interesting character. Now, you probably don't recognize my voice in her, but do you recognize this? What can I help you with? <laughs> in a quarter of a mile, make a left turn. Shall I search the web? <laughs> Never mind what I'm wearing. <laughs> Many people ask a lot of different questions of Siri, and she does have a, a very distinct personality. She's a very interesting character in her own right. One of the most interesting facts about her is that she was not created by Apple. She was actually created by three engineers. Apple, of course, developed her. But one of the original engineers was from Norway. His name was Dag Kidlaus. And he was responsible for naming Siri, because in Norwegian, the name Siri means beautiful woman who guides you to victory. <laughs> of course, we know better. She's the feisty chick who tells you where to go. <laughs> now, Siri is a digital voice, one of many that we have to interact with on a regular basis, right? They're everywhere. Phones, tablets. GPS systems, they're in our cars, and often at the end of phone calls we have to make. Thank you for calling. I'm sorry, no one can take your call at this time. Please press one to leave a message, or you may hold. <laughs> and hold. <laughs> and how about some Kenny G? <laughs> Digital voices do come from real life humans. Uh, so far, voice actors who read thousands of phrases and sentences to get every sound combination in the language. The first recordings I did were in July of 2005, four hours a day, five days a week. That's what became the basic vocabulary for Siri. Now, the process afterwards, technicians, programmers, and of course computers, go into the recordings, extract sounds, reform them into new phrases and sentences, and these are what end up on our devices. It's an amazing process called concatenation. But the original phrases and sentences that were created were mostly for sound rather than content. So as a result, a lot of these phrases were pretty wacky and didn't necessarily make a lot of sense. Here's an example. Militia oi hallucinate Bakra okra ooze. <laughs> Say the zzz ding again. Cathexis fefatali sexual ease stump. <laughs> yeah. Say the shrouding again. Say the shrouding again. Say the shrading again. Say the shreeding again. Say the shriding again. <laughs> I did not make these up. That's the sad part. But you can see the importance of the programmers in this process. In fact, it's the programmers who determine what Siri and other digital voices say. So, in other words, if you don't like what Siri says, or maybe you get frustrated with her and uh, you don't, she doesn't understand you all the time or something, please do not blame Siri. And especially, do not curse at Siri. <laughs> She's extremely sensitive. And she knows where you live. <laughs> Scary, isn't it? Now, the original voice of Siri was iconic because she was the first concatenated voice that sounded human. And you could interact with her. She had a personality, a sense of humor. And Steve Jobs was actually very important in that role. He was very involved in the development of Siri. And he embedded some of his favorite comedy into the app. For instance, if you were to ask Siri, what is the meaning of life? More often than not, Siri will say 42 which sounds kind of strange and confusing, but it's a reference to The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, a BBC radio show uh, that was one of Steve Jobs' favorites. Now, Apple continues to develop Siri and change her, beginning with the OS 7 system. All of the original Siri voices worldwide 
were changed. Now, the new voices are a little more generic, maybe, not quite as sassy in tone, and uh, they do what I call text speech, which is speaking in abbreviations like LOL instead of laughing. That's what Siri does. She says LOL. But how would Siri laugh? You know, really? Ha 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 ha. Ha 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 ha. Ha 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 ha. We certainly wouldn't want Siri to laugh at us now, would we? Although you know she does. <laughs> Most people can't really tell from my regular speaking voice that I'm the original voice of Siri. And there are many reasons for that. One is that after the recordings are done, the voice is manipulated to sound a certain way, audiologically. Another reason is that during the actual recording sessions, I pitched my voice a little bit lower to be Siri. Now, that's what we voice actors do. We make our voices appropriate for whatever uh, speech we're giving, whatever script we're reading, or for whatever character we're trying to portray. For instance, if you call your bank, you might hear my voice say, thank you for calling your bank. I'm sorry, your account is now overdrawn. <laughs> Have a nice day. <laughs> Goodbye. And then if you call Macy's, you'll hear my voice sound like this. Thank you for calling Macy's. Your card is now activated and ready for use. Thank you for shopping with us. Then if you go on the web to a Christmas website called clauskids.com, you will hear my voice as an old tree. Oh, I'm so delighted you came to see me today. Oh, I'm so happy you did, and I hope you come back again soon. There's the little elf, Star. Hello. <laughs> My name's Star. What's yours? I'm going up to the North Pole later today. Would you like to come with me? You would? Oh, boy. <laughs> There's fortune teller, Madame Francesca. Ah, come in. I read crystal ball for you. <gasps> ah, you will meet tall, dark stranger. One of my all-time favorites, though, is event planner Shaka Cohen. Hello, darling. I do it all. Weddings, bar mitzvahs, the whole thing, darling. Call me. <laughs> Can you imagine if Siri had Shaka's voice? That would be a whole new experience, wouldn't it? <laughs> Hello, what do you want? <laughs> what am I wearing? What are you wearing? <laughs> Getting back to Siri, she appeared on October 4th, 2011. Yes, she's a Libra. And the day that Siri appeared is the day I found out she had my voice. A fellow voice actor sent me an email and said, hey, we're playing with this new iPhone app. Isn't this you? And I went, really? Went on the site and listened, and yep. Wow. I had no idea. And I had no idea what to do with that information. Part of me wanted to shout it out to the world. Wow, my voice was chosen for this thing. <laughs> and another part of me just wanted to hide, which I know may be hard for some of us in this very fame-oriented selfie culture to imagine. But I'm basically an introvert. And also, as a voice talent, I was used to being invisible. Suddenly, I'm this persona. So it was very weird. And also, anonymity is important to voice talent in the digital age, because when we audition, it's very much like the television show The Voice, where the talent is judged only on their voice and their performance, not on how they look or where they're from. So going back to the going big idea, even if it's unintentional, imagine I'm in my booth at home recording these phrases I thought was phone messaging getting paid my regular hourly rate, which was not bad. And then all of a sudden, boom, my voice is on millions of devices all over the world. I call it becoming accidentally famous. But when you think about it, it's not all that different from other things that we all have to go through at different times of our lives. And that is dealing with the unexpected. And how we humans hate change, don't we? We don't really like dealing with stuff we don't understand or that we don't think is fair. 
It took me two whole years to decide to come out as Siri because I was in a terrible quandary. And do you know what fueled that quandary? Can you guess? The F word, fear. <laughs> All I could think was of was how can I possibly live up to the expectations of what Siri would look like and act like? It seemed impossible. And then a phrase came to mind, something that my former husband, NHL hockey player Kurt Bennett used to say, do what you fear most. Of course, he was wearing 90 pounds of padding at the time when he said that. <laughs> <laughs> but it does sound kind of simple and true, doesn't it? Yeah, do what you fear most, OK. I'm not even talking about hopping into a pool of sharks or getting into the ring with Mike Tyson. I'm talking about making those scary decisions that we all have to make in life. Should I leave this job that I don't like? Should I go back to school? What if I, how will I pay for it? What if I try and fail? Now, I know a lot of you today here are students. And you're at a time in your life where you're having to make a lot of pretty scary decisions. What should I major in? Oh, if I major in that, can I graduate and get a good job? Maybe some of you are even contemplating a potential mate. So let's just stop right there for a second and think about that. What are the fears and scary decisions that you're all facing right this second? And more importantly, how did they make you feel? Maybe a little queasy? I've done a lot of thinking about this, believe me. And I've come to the conclusion that there is a way to mitigate some of this fear, and that is to have faith. Faith that whatever decision we make, it's just another step on our individual life's path. So if it turns out to be a disappointing decision, unfulfilling, we've learned what not to do. If it turns out to be gratifying, we can be happy and then move on to the next scary decision. Because that seems to be what it's all about, right? This one big, long learning process that continues throughout our lives. Now, I had some help with my scary Siri decision because friends, and especially my husband and son, gave me a lot of encouragement, uh, harassment, OK, <laughs> to uh, go ahead and do this, you know, make that leap. I can remember standing in front of my husband just like this, I swear. OK, let's go ahead and send the email to get this thing started. And, but once I had done that, some good things started to happen. First of all, immediately I felt better because I'd faced the fear and I'd taken some sort of action. So that was a huge relief. And then I started to do a lot, to do a lot of really fun Siri-related things. I made appearances on CNN, uh, The Queen Latifah Show, Showbiz Tonight. I read the top 10 list for David Letterman. I got a wonderful agent in Los Angeles, Wes Stevens at Vox, and I started to do some speaking engagements. You know what? I was even invited to do a TED Talk. <laughs> talk about going big, LOL. <laughs> Thank you.